So um, basically, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to kind of review our division process. All right. So now again, what you want to make sure that you do is follow along and write this down because after I'm done with this, I'm going to give you guys three more examples to go ahead and practice on. Okay. So you're going to want to practice those on those examples as I go over them. Okay. So. When we're doing long division, Gavin, that's kind of like my hint to uh, change what you're doing. So basically what we're going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is when we're doing long division. Now, first of all, guys, we already know the answer, right? We already think about this. We already know that x minus 7 divides into this polynomial x minus 3 times, right? We already know what the answer is. But I'm going to show you just the process of what we do. The first thing we always have to do is make sure that our dividend and divisor are in descending order from highest exponent down. And we say, check, we're good. So now what we do is we take our leading term of our divisor, which in this case is going to be x, and we're going to divide it into x squared. And we say x divides into x squared how many times? Now I said that out loud, but think about it this way. x divides into x squared how many times? And a lot of times when you guys write it like this, you can say, oh, that is you know, x2 minus 1, which is just equal to x, right? That kind of makes a little bit more sense. So x divides into x squared x times. Then what we do is we multiply the x times x, and we multiply the x times negative 7. So I'll do like these little arcs here. x times x is x squared. x times negative 7x is a negative 7x. Or x times a negative 7 is a negative 7x. You multiply x times x, which is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. Mr. McLean, where do you get the x minus 7 out? That's the, prop, that's the problem we were doing. OK, so we take the one closest to the equal sign? Huh? What? We take the one closest to the equal sign or whatever one. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is just, this is, this is the problem I'm asking you to solve. We, this is a separate problem. So don't like, I mean, I'm using these to relate to each other, but okay. this is like one problem. This is multiplication, and then this was division. Then we subtract the rows. So when we subtract, we're going to subtract vertically. Colin, that's not what uh, Ms. Brand wants to see here. x squared minus x squared is going to give us 0x squared, right? Which is just 0, which I'm just not going to write in there. Negative 10x minus a negative. Notice it's minus a negative, which is going to turn it to a positive. So it's really negative 10x plus 7x, which is going to give you a negative 3x. Now we do the same process over and over again. x divides into negative 3x how many times? Negative 3x divided by x. How many times does x divide into negative 3x? negative 3 times, right? Which we already know, guys, the answer is right up there, right? You already know the answer. Then we just take negative 3, and now we multiply negative 3 times x and negative 3 times negative 7. Negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 7 is a positive 21. Then again, we subtract the rows. Negative 3x minus a negative 3x is going to give you 0x, which is just 0. And then 21, I don't have anything to bring down, subtract 21 from, so I'm going to bring down the 21 from up top. 21 minus 21 is 0. zero. And so since my final answer is 0, then that means that x minus 7 divides evenly into this polynomial x minus 3 times. Does that kind of make a little bit of sense? What's the answer? X minus 3. Oh, yeah. makes no sense. Got the three X and I'm sorry, Nick, 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 Nick. I'm answering a question for a student. I'll, I can answer a question for you, but let me listen to what the student is asking. Just the way I did it. So when I brought down the D on negative 3 X, it just brought down between 1 and then so it says what? X minus 7 um, which goes into the 1 negative 3 times. It just got the answer. Yep, but we're going to be doing some other ones, so that's why I wanted you guys to follow this process. Ian, do you have a question? Yeah. So, like, the, why didn't you, like, when you do this, the x, the part where you put the line on the x and the negative 7 for x, like, why did you do that? Like here? Yeah, 
like just to show that I'm multiplying x times x and multiplying x times negative 7. You multiply negative 3 times x, negative 3 times negative 7. So I'm just showing that I'm multiplying it by both of them. Wait, you have so like, if, so, so like the x, you have to multiply it, like whatever, I guess, what is it, binomial, binomial, like whatever, like if you're going to, you have to multiply both uh, numbers in the binomial? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Whatever your yep, answer was, yep. Um, why did you bring down the 21 in the last part and not the first time? I mean, you could have. I could have brought down the 21. I would have had nothing to subtract it from, though. Right? If you brought down a 21 here, like, there's nothing. Like, here, I multiply x times that, x times this, right? So I really am subtracting a 0. So I really have nothing else to subtract from. But I mean, we only needed it on the last problem. That's why I brought it down. Um, so now, what I'd like you guys to do 